All right, so we're back. Still covering uh, the Elimination Chamber event in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. We finished off talking about Becky Lynch versus Lita and the match that didn't happen, the Viking Raiders versus the Usos. And we move on to the main event, the Men's Elimination Chamber for the WWE Championship. Bobby Lashley walking in as champion to defend against Austin Theory, Seth Rollins, uh, Matt Riddle, um, Brock Lesnar, and I'm forgetting one person. AJ Styles. There we go, AJ Styles. Six men, and just like the women's one, you know, they get their big entrances, but also they did that weird order thing where they had the two men wait in the ring for Brock to come out. Yeah, Brock's the last one out. He's the big draw amongst the six. He's going to be in the pod. He's not starting the match. It's weird that they wouldn't let him start the match, but you think, actually, Brock, he's a very dramatic point of the story that's going to come later. <laughs> yeah. What a, what a, what do they call it? What's the, uh, Chekhov's gun? What a Chekhov's gun Brock Lesnar is in a pod. It's like, it's not if, it's when. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I really wish my dad was here to kind of explain a lot because uh, much like you missed most of this match, I missed the first part because I really had to use the restroom. Yeah, that's funny. And when I came out, all I see is Austin Theory was put through a pod by Seth Rollins and Bobby Lashley is on the floor getting attended or on the like floor of his pod getting attended to. Yeah, that's what CBS Sports here says. Rollins will would continue the attack until he power bomb Theory into the side of Lashley's pod, sending Theory through the plexiglass and into Lashley. Yeah, and it's at this point I was like, I was thinking, oh, are they gonna do the thing where you know Lashley exit and then comes back later, you know, mm. to, re- to retain? But uh, I also figured. Maybe this is their way to protect him so that he doesn't look, so he doesn't take a pinfall, you know? Mm -hmm. And what we'd come to learn after the event is that actually at the Royal Rumble, Lashley got injured, and that's why he was taking some of those suplexes awkwardly. Mm. And that this was their way, I guess, you know, they were hoping he would be cleared by the time for the chamber, Mm. but uh, worst came to worst, wasn't cleared, and this was their way of getting him out without taking a pinfall, so thus protecting him in the finish. Yeah, so, I mean, he's dealing with nagging injuries. They rolled him out in this relatively awkward way. And we've got five men. A guaranteed new champion, Jack. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Styles and Riddle and uh, Theory. Theory and Rollins, you know, all get into it. You know, and Brock's kind of waiting in his chamber. And, like, they let each man out, obviously. Again, chamber match kind of going pretty quickly, you know, with the offense and stuff. And uh, they get to the point where it's down to Bobby and Brock, but Bobby's obviously not there. And when they show that the that Bobby was to, to come out because Brock's supposed to be last one out, it's like, oh, well, he's not here. I guess we're just going to wait until they let Lesnar out. Nope. Lesnar breaks his pot open and gets out because he's not waiting for no one. I heard of that. I heard that. I read that later. And I also read that. He wasn't supposed to do that, but he did it anyway. So you know what that means, Jack? They didn't gimmick his pod. They didn't rig it so that he could easily break it. The man just broke an elimination chamber pod with his bare hands. Yeah, and you know... (laughs) I go back and watch this match, Jack. It's to watch that happen. (laughs) Yeah, especially because the best part is you see Riddle's reaction of him coming out and stuff, and you're just like... You're just like, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, there's, like, beef between there. And, of course, Brock immediately goes after him. And, you know, with their beef, Brock gets him out first because he doesn't want to have to deal with him throughout this match. Incredible. You know, Brock just basically runs through that competition. You know, he runs through Styles and and Rollins, you know. And uh, it leaves uh, him in theory as the last ones. And, 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 like, nothing is more sports entertainment than, like, the thought. Again, I think I have to watch this match, Jack, to see Brock Lesnar and Austin Theory alone. Like, it was the Royal Rumble again. You know who's going to win. It's just, it's just waiting out the inevitable. 
But yeah. to think of Austin Theory in that position. Yeah, and they really played it up because, uh, you know, they mentioned, oh, the chamber door only ever opens when they're getting the people out. Well, they're getting Rollins out, I think it was. Or no, I think, yeah, I think it was Rollins or Styles. I forgot who they were getting out. And Brock's in the ring. Theory's like on the outside by one of the pods. And they both kind of look at the open door. And Theory <laughs> tries to run for it. And Brock just runs out and slams it shut and makes sure it's locked. And then he just keeps trying to corner Austin. And then Austin finally climbs up to that top of the pod where Brock meets him. Starts slamming him into the glass at the very top. And much to the shock of everyone, gets him up to do an F5 from the top of the pod. No. He grabs Theory, and from the top of the pod down to the grate, not not to the mat, to the grate on the outside, he F5s him. To the grate? Yeah. And Brock just, like, you know, showboats to the crowd, gets down, throws Theory back in the ring, and pins him. And we have a new WWE champion in Brock Lesnar. Wow. It was a very rapid-fire chamber, and, you know, like you said, everyone kind of knew what was going to happen when once uh, Lashley went out, but... They've managed to still make it entertaining. I mean, I, it's a match I missed, but that I am going to do my best to watch. Yeah, I mean, entertaining, as we mentioned, you know, but uh, it sets up, you know, Brock versus Roman. Admittedly, title for title. Yeah, title for title. Admittedly, this is the eighth time they will go against each other. I don't know what the number is when they're one-on-one because I'm including... Right. You know, the different triple threats they've had. Right. But, uh, I don't know. For an eighth time, I mean, the twist is Brock's a baby face and Roman's a heel. And plus, it's title for title. Winner take mm-hmm. all. Going to be real interesting. And, uh, I bring, I brought it up in the last episode. The topic I want to bring up is the brand split because with this happening, it makes you wonder. Is that still going to be a thing if it's title for title, one man going to walk out with both titles? I submit for your consideration this, Jack. Um, I want you to think back to a better time pre-pandemic 2019. It was a triple threat, winner take all, women's championship match that that ended WrestleMania. Ronda Rousey, the man at the time, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair. They unified those titles seemingly, but two belt Becky, right, walked around with them for as long as she did. And then over the course of the next couple of months or a year, she lost one of them, right? Yeah. Two. Um, <laughs> but like, my, I wanted to just kind of create that, uh, that comparison to sort of paint for you what I think is going to happen. I think one of these men holds both belts. I don't think the brands are combined, but I do think that you create this this mega final boss that has to be beaten twice, and you could make two stars out of. Yeah, that's, what, that's kind of what I was thinking, because like, I, I think I was telling my dad, you know, is that, a, you know, though it would kind of, you know, in some people's eyes make sense to end the brand split, give people more challengers, you know. If they were going to be doing that, you would see all the titles being unified. You know, you would see mm-hmm. the Usos facing off against Alpha Academy at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. You would see Becky versus Charlotte. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think they're in a position to merge. They have too many. They have too much talent. And they have Fox and USA that I think are breathing down their necks to be distinct, but also as good as the other guy. Yeah. You know, it was something I was talking about with my dad a lot because I was like, I was trying to weigh out the pros and cons. I was like, well, the pros would be, you know, you widen a lot of your divisions, you know, like, yeah, you give Roman more challengers by giving him AJ Styles, Randy Orton, mm-hmm. Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens again, you know, mm-hmm. that WWE titles in Big E, you know, but yeah. then, you know, and it, it does the same for all the divisions. The tag division yeah. now has more tag teams rather than a mm-hmm. few. The women's division has more, but then the con was that means kind of less people getting a shot like me and my dad were talking about, you know. I hear you. Yeah, I um, I think Roman is more beatable than Brock. Like, you put him on Roman, and, like, Seth got close, right? Yeah. 
Mm, yeah. Um, he's had that title for long enough where if he loses the Universal one, he... Um, uh, sorry for the long pause. I was going to say um, he can lose one, still have the other kind of not lose face, but also build a star in his loss. But also, remember that face he was making to the, the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble, scoffing it as the inferior title? Yes. Jack, what if he beats Brock and then just vacates it? There you go. Let's start a tournament then. Yeah. I mean, that that's kind of what I was thinking too, and like a lot of people have been thinking is that, well, you know, if he wins both, it means he can finally drop one. Mm-hmm. And then still kind of continue. Like the, the booking that I've seen, a lot of people is like, oh, he can finally drop the Universal title and then continue on with the WWE title with like a fresh set of competitors. Mm-hmm. And it just makes you wonder how are they going to approach it? Because, you know, with Becky, we saw, you know, she defended the SmackDown and Raw one separately. You know, she would have yes. two separate matches. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I wonder if they'll do the same for Roman where. He either defends it twice or he defends them both at the same time until there comes a point where there's two separate challengers for each title. Gosh, if it's Brock, literally no one can beat Brock. Who can beat Brock? Goodness gracious. It's going to be real interesting, the decisions they make in the coming months when it comes to those two titles. Yeah, like... Like, you hate to see the WrestleMania be two nights, but there's just one match with both titles at stake, right? Like, come on, Jack, we're filling two nights. Yeah. <laughs> we're filling two cards, and you put both titles in one match? Then what's the matter with you? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, looking at the previous two Manias that have been two nights, it's like, despite being two nights, it's not like we've seen... A lot of their other titles be defended on those nights. Sami Zayn? Oh, he's going to put it up against Knoxville. When we do get a title match, Jack, it's going to be some joke of a match like that. Oh, God, oh no. Yeah, it's like, you know, uh, last year at Mania, okay, we did see the Raw tag titles defended, but I don't think we saw the SmackDown ones defended. I think they were defended on SmackDown. Yeah, and then... Uh, we saw the IC and US title, yes. Yep. We saw the women's ones and the women tag one. I totally forgot the women's tag team championships were even a thing right now. It's Carmella and um, Zelina Vega. Yeah. Currently. But it, it, like, I mean, if they're not going to have that WWE match, then you at least hope they put those mid card titles there and use the, those slots that are open to build up the mid card and upper yeah. card. Yeah. Especially because on the SmackDown side, things have just really become difficult to understand of like, well, who's considered the upper card and who's considered the mid card? You know, Roman is the upper card. Everyone else is the lower card. <laughs> there is no mid. Just like there's no, uh, just like there's no, um, what do you used to call the middle class? There's no more middle class. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at least on Raw, you know, things are pretty established. I mean, somewhat, because, I mean, you still have certain guys challenging for mid-card titles. And guess what? I mean, we've got Rollins and Owens, and uh, we've got folk who, like, they don't have anything going on right now. Yeah. It's all really up in the air. Yeah, they- I heard uh, somebody t- say this morning in a, a news video that Balor is going to challenge for Damian Priest's U.S. title. Oh, yeah, but that's... They said, that'd be great, Demon Finn Balor versus Damien. I was like, oh, I I threw up in my mouth. I was like, oh, stop. Stop. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you know, they're going to be having it on Raw. Obviously, it being a weekly show, I expect some type of shenanigans that hopefully pushes the actual match to Mania. Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't know, there's a ton of... There's a ton of people that don't have a lot going on. Yeah. And we're like a month and a half out from Mania, man. Yeah, I mean, we're only hearing speculations that like, oh, maybe they want KO to face off against Stone Cold Steve Austin out of nowhere. I hope Austin tells them no. 
Yeah. I know Boston says, hey, you should have either talked to me a year ago or we can talk right now about a year from now. I'm not going to roll up six weeks out from this. Yeah, and then it's like, it doesn't seem like they're going to continue off the Royal Rumble. What happened with Seth and Roman? Nope. Doesn't look like that's going. I mean, you know, that's post mania, if anything. Yeah. Uh, try to think. I mean, if Cody Rhodes comes in, what is he going to be doing? You know, if they bring him in for mania? I hope if they bring Cody Rhodes in, I hope he's wearing polka dots and he's dancing and he doesn't acknowledge anything as being ironic. You know what I mean? Like, I hope he comes and he smiles and he's, you know, a dancing fool. And I hope he just completely recreates Dusty's run. (laughs) I mean, I, I didn't, I mean, the SmackDown side ain't looking too good either because like we mentioned, it's like, uh, I there's barely anyone to name over there. Like, what are Cesaro, Sheamus, Ricochet, and all of them gonna be doing? Um, I mean, what is what is Balor gonna be doing come Mania? You know, as we mentioned, who knows if that thing with Priest is actually going to extend to Mania? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is- so I don't think the the solution is to merge the brands because I think merging the brands puts half of that roster out on the out in the cold. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was just like the last thing you want to do. They're they're holding Mustafa Ali hostage. <laughs> yeah. My dad mentioned it too. It was like, you know, if they end the brand split, what's to say they don't just, you know, rinse and repeat the same stuff from each show. Like, oh, you know, we already have enough rematches, even though they have more people to work with What's yep. to say they don't, you know, just do rematches from Monday on Friday? You know, nope. So, so it's like... In fact, you know, in the glory days of the Attitude Era, that's what happens. I'll never forget. Not having Raw, but they cover what happened on Raw. And SmackDown was, God, a, you know, really close facsimile for what happened on Raw. Yeah. Hey, this match got interrupted it was by DQ, so we're going to try again on Friday Night SmackDown. Or Thursday at the time. Yeah, a lot of people brought up, you know, um, when the brand split ended, you know, back in, I want to say, like, 2010, I think was the last year of the draft before it came back in 2016. They were talking about, you know, well, look at what happened to SmackDown, especially when they unified the world title. It was like, look at what happened. And it was like, you know, a lot of talent weren't on TV. There was rematch city, you know. But rematch of, and um, video packages. Yeah. It was a dark time for SmackDown. Yeah, so it's like a lot of people have been saying, you know, you want a you want a surprising Royal Rumble run in, have a video package run in as that throwback to the 2010s. Yeah, it, so it's like I know, like the brand split seems like a good idea because, like, oh, more people in each division, but like. Like you said, it's probably going to end up leaving a ton of these wrestlers out in the cold. I think so. Hey, we've got like a clear picture of WrestleMania, and I venture to say we're going to have one more conversation before WrestleMania. I'll tell you to you about it in a second, but I want to hear your prediction, Jack. Who wins, Lesnar or Reigns? I think Reigns wins. I will pick Lesnar just to be combative. How about Lynch? Or Bill Air? I think it's got to be uh, Bianca. I think so, too. And how about Ronda versus Charlotte? Well, as the, as the longtime listeners would know, we are both big supporters of Charlotte, and I'm just kidding. It's probably going to be Ronda. I kind of, yeah, I'd hope so. And then, uh, so yeah, Jack, I think uh, before WrestleMania, you and I have a bit of a revolution uh, in our sights, if you know what I mean. That is right. AEW Revolution is coming up, and certain matches have already started being announced. Adam Cole challenges Adam Page for the rights to the, be the best Adam, but also the AEW Championship. Adam Page, baby! What the heck? Hey, Jack, have you seen the meme of Adam Cole holding the belt, but they make the belt real big? Yeah, I've seen that. Where they, they ma- I saw one where like, they literally made it the size of him. And yeah. Like, he, so many people were just saying that like that belt looked too big for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, you also have CM Punk versus MJF in a dog collar match. Yeah, that's color me be. interested. They brought the photo out. The one they photo. They brought the photo out. Young MJF with CM Punk. They finally brought it out. That's what everyone's been waiting for to be referenced. Goodness gracious. For you, it was the best day of your life. For me, it was just a better. Saturday. <laughs> or whatever day of the week it was. And then uh, we have uh, Rosa versus uh, Baker 2. Ooh. That's been announced. And then... We're still waiting for all the participants, but we have the Face of the Revolution ladder match with three hosses in the match. Keith Lee, three Ward guys, Lowe, Powerhouse who, Hobbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three guys that you don't expect to be a part of a ladder match. <laughs> yeah, I saw someone saying they're going to have to bring out that ladder that Big Show brought out, the reinforced one. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who else they're going to announce for that match, but those three names alone already has people enticed. Absolutely. Yeah, and there's a couple other matches to be announced, though. The tag team titles still need to be announced. We got to see... Something to do with Jericho and Eddie Kingston, I I imagine. Yeah, um, the TBS title. I'm uh, I'm, I'm not watching the weekly show, but I am enjoying the thought that people are telling Jericho he's full of it and that he's holding people back and using them, and it's good character development, but, you know, it's about time for this part of the development of that character. Yeah. We still got to see what happens with the TNT and TBS title, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, those ones are kind of open challenge, but it would be interesting to see if they do have anything on that card for the two. And then... Yeah. I'm trying to think of any other stories that are coming into play. Um... Jay White, he's Jay- just getting in all the trouble. Yeah. Uh, he recently turned on uh, the Tongans in Impact. Yes, he did. Yeah. So- in Impact. Yeah, so... What's going on, Jack? Jack, did you know that in New Japan, the New Japan Cup tournament is starting March 2nd? I saw that, and what I also saw was they increased the amount of competitors, I believe. It's a lot of competitors, and I'm not going to miss this one, Jack. I am watching this. Yeah, I mean, I I saw the amount of competitors, and I was like, I'm going to have to keep a watch on that because that's going to be crazy, especially because all, all, you know, all limits are off. You know, it's going to be juniors. It's going to be, you know, the different people, you know, like the, the weight classes aren't going to matter in this tournament. 48 men. Who do you think's gonna win? Let's see. Well, Okada's champion right now. I was just gonna say it's funny. You could put a hundred men in this thing, and it's probably gonna be Okada. <laughs> yeah. Jack, first round, Okada versus El Desperado. Oh, come on! Man, have they announced the bracket? Because now I, I need to see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I'll share my screen. How much time we got, Jack? 21 minutes. 21 minutes to, to gush, to gush over what, I I tell you what, man, I haven't been this excited in a minute. Oh, man, I'm looking at some of these matchups. Oh, uh-huh. not to go quiet on the crowd, but they put, they put uh, Shingo against Ishii in the first round I'm seeing. <laughs> Goodness. I love to see Minoru Suzuki get a bye in the first round. He'll face either uh, Takahashi, uh, uh, Hiromu, or... Oh, you were in a time bomb shirt? Yeah. Nice. Either Hiromu or Sho. I'm happy to see either of those. Oh, man. I'm looking at some of these. Is, um... What's his name in it? Is um, what's his name? The guy who came back from death. From death. Uh, uh, I'm looking at the. I'm still looking at the thing too. I see. Uh, I mean, he's always he's more than likely gonna beat him, but uh, Ibushi's going off against Okan, and then I hope he goes against Ishimori in the next round. Mm-hmm. Wild. 
Oh man. Sonata just won the US title. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't see that. It got spoiled for me by Instagram. Yeah, that happened to me too. I Gosh, saw it announced it. and I was like, I don't want to stay up for that, but maybe I'll yeah. be able to catch you without spoilers. And, then and honestly, spoilers. you know what's funny? I saw the announcement of um, Tanahashi versus uh, Sonata, and I honestly thought that'd be a great ex- ex- exhibition. It'd be fun. Nothing's going to happen. Why would anything happen? And then it happened, Jack. <laughs> Yeah, his first title in New Japan. His first singles title. Yeah. Jack, I'm looking for what's his name? Um, Black Shorts, the wrestler. Oh. Um, Chibata. There we go. I don't see him he's on not, this list. That's he's not problem. on this list. I guess that's for the best. <laughs> yeah. Save him for the G1. If he's yeah. if, if he's able to, you know, don't put him through this grueling tournament. Put him through the G one, hopefully. <sighs> well, um, New Japan looks like they're doing just fine with who they have. They don't need no forbidden door, you know. Yeah. Um, Except Gato's in a match. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe they do need a forbidden door. Yeah. And Jado Jado is in a match. Mm, Jado versus Chase Owens. That that's a really weird matchup to see. I'm also looking at who's getting like the buy in some of these, and it's kind of yes. throwing me off. Like, Bad Luck Fale's getting a buy, but Tanahashi isn't. Instead, he's gonna go against Yo in the first round. Yeah, Gato gets a buy. I mean, I don't know what they did, but like Doki gets a buy, Bullet Club. And um, Suzuki Gun members, it's funny. And Kojima, just because. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said, you know, they seem pretty set. Still probably wishing they had some of their gaijin talent or could bring in some of those guys appearing on Strong. Yeah, for sure. The 40 man, 48-man field has been revealed for the New Japan Cup, which gets underway March 2nd in the Nippon Budokan, the biggest field in tournament history, will see 16 first-round matchups with 16 random seedings awaiting victors in the second round all the way through the finals on March 26th and 27th in Osaka, Joe Hall. Going to be real interesting to see. And speaking of, uh, you know, Forbidden Door and needing that talent, you know, uh, and it ties into uh, New Japan Strong, as I mentioned, uh, did uh did you see just how much uh Swerve Isaiah Swerve Scott has been signing himself up for ever since his his uh ninety day immediately expired? Yeah, I follow him on Instagram, so I'm super excited to see him pop up in all the places that he's popped up. He was here in Koreatown last week yeah. answering Jay White's USJ Open Challenge. Yeah, man, he showed up in strong. He's gonna be showing up out in the UK in progress. You know, he's keep tease showing up in Defy, you know, all these different indie promotions. He obviously mm-hmm. has the interests of places like Impact and AEW and New Japan. You and know? he's going to be in GCW. In, he's going to be in LA, I think, GCW in April or something like that. Yeah, he's going to show up in Jonathan Gresham's promotion, Terminus. Nice. You know, there's a ton of, man, this man, this man took his opportunity and ran with it. He's showing up everywhere. Yep. And, you know, that's the good part of seeing a lot of these times. I mean, I'm hoping, you know, there's there's so many times I want to see, you know, he be more than likely fits it. So I'm hoping to see if, like, you know, if borders allow it to open up, all these guys that show up on strong, you know, a guy like him. And, uh, show, Jack, you know when it's going to be like a, you know when it's going to be the absolute greatest time to be a wrestler, Lord willing, everything happens the way it needs to happen for things to improve? This time next year. WrestleMania at SoFi Stadium. Oh, man. We haven't talked about WrestleMania. But what happens, Jack, with every city that hosts WrestleMania is that all of these companies put on their absolute best showing in a venue nearby that week. Yeah. They're all going to be here, Jack. Got to gotta save up a year in advance, you know. I'm putting it out there now. Got a piggy bank ready. Just start throwing it in. Take all of my money. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, it's funny you say that because uh, they, they recently asked Tony Khan, why haven't you been on the West Coast? And he was like, oh, I expect AEW on the West Coast sometime soon. Oh, great. So, so it's like I can only imagine, you know, Strong, New Japan Strong coming out here. I imagine GCW is going to come out here because GCW has that thing of the collective that happens like every year, like a huge group of shows that last yes. almost like uh-huh. a whole week. It's like they usually do it in the town that WrestleMania is in because they know all the wrestling fans are going to be out there. Mm-hmm. Man, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be real interesting. I'm I'm really hoping, you know, finally life can, you know, in a sense go back to normal where these restrictions yeah. can go down because New Japan especially, they really want to probably get those American talents back out there. Mm-hmm. And, man, it's going to be a real interesting time to see, you know, with Jay White showing up in AEW, who knows if uh, they start uh, a working relation there. I mean, there are rumors that they, they could reopen uh, AEW and uh, Impact reopen their working relation. There's a lot to look forward to. I mean, and not only that, we're still waiting, I think, on more free agents to become available. Yeah. Like, I know Tony Storms is uh, coming up soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, We're waiting for 90 days to be wrapped up, right? Yeah, Jeff Hardy and his 90 mm-hmm. days. Shane McMahon. <laughs> Shane McMahon's going to pop up somewhere. Goodness gracious. Oh, man, let's see. Shane McMahon, the male Charlotte Flair, <laughs> as in a second-generation talent who just needs to relax. <laughs> um, I also forgot ROH's uh, reemergence is happening. In March or no? Is it March or April? I think it's you mean like their April. Hall of Fame. Well, they're gonna have that like reboot show. I think. It's oh, April. great! I think it's. I April. didn't know that they had a show lined up. Yeah, I think it's gonna be Final Battle. They're expecting to return with a apparently new logos and new presentation. Great! So it's gonna be interesting. I mean, we've seen all their talent working the Indies and still defending those belts. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jonathan Gresham, Gresham's been showing up anywhere and everywhere, and so is Bandito defending those. You say titles. anywhere and anywhere, but he didn't show up to that GCW The World show. Mm. Blake uh, Christian? Oh, yeah. Called him out. Says, I'm still of my shot when he fought um, Leo Rush in his place. He also showed I don't up. know what happened. Yeah, I, I don't know. And then um, Josh Alexander recently became a free agent. Yep, on his way back to Canada, I fear, because of visa issues. Yeah, hoping to see him come back to America, because I know he had to pull out of Jonathan Gresham's tournament event because of visa issues, as you brought up. All righty, Jack, before we wrap up, we got 48 men. You got to pick who's going to win the New Japan Cup. Hmm. I'm going to go for my guy, Sonata. Interesting. I, hmm. I've rooted for him the last couple of tournaments just because I think he's owed some breakout moment. You know, Evil got his, right? Uh, true. He's the only one of them LIJ guys. Even Abushi, or even Bushi, did he, was he ever the junior, the junior heavyweight champ? Uh, let me double check. I don't think so. Or he might have been, you know, because. He's really- been in a couple of those matches I can remember, but I don't remember if he was ever champ. Well, I searched him up, and the first image I see is him holding that title. So, so listen, I'm going for my guy Sonata. Yeah, I mean, the cool skull. It, it's funny because you know you brought up evil, and like, there's this one video I saw where this guy was like breaking down, you know, heels and villains in wrestling. Yeah, you know? and he broke evil, down like a, your dad's favorite wrestler. <laughs> yeah, he he broke down a. Uh, evil's heel turn from uh lij you know and like it was yeah. funny because the way he broke it down and how it happened you know you it, like to outsiders you would have seen that and be like man this must have been a great storyline but to the people who kept up and saw the way they handled evil post winning that title and even after dropping it was like man the build-up and like the way they did it was real interesting but uh the booking of that was pretty bad so but, yeah, yeah you know, I've heard um, I've heard somebody sort of say that New Japan's really lost its way when it comes to like long term storytelling to do this like hot shot, you know, twitch reaction booking to the detriment of talent like evil. Yeah, but 
I could see Sonata win, especially because he's challenged for that heavyweight title before. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, as much as we kind of, as much as people kind of rag on evil in his reign, I think I mentioned at the time when it happened to you that um, it opened the door for talent that necessarily couldn't get into that picture scene to get it, and that's when we saw Offspray and uh, Shingo get in there. So, what's to say Sonata can't get in there? I think my pick might be. Maybe, hmm, I don't know. I, it, he seems like such a staple of their tag division. I don't know if I can necessarily say Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, I'd love for him to win something like this. Yeah, he I mean, had such a great showing in the first half of the G1. Yeah, and like, you know, people have kind of been predicting him to win at least this New Japan Cup in the coming years. I think that may have to be my pick. Because although I may not be able to see it happen, because like I said, he's such a staple of their tag division, I kind of really want to see it. I dig it. I think that definitely has to be my pick. Either that or, you know, just because I, I know the way they are with their talent, you know, and keeping certain guys ahead, probably Ibushi. Yeah. I, I, I just don't know if Ibushi has recovered in the eyes of the fans yet after... You know, well, you know what? A, a long tournament like this may be exactly what he needs, you know? Yeah, because as everyone knows, you know, he unintentionally turned heel when he unified those titles. The fans. I don't really know if anyone would care that he unified the titles. It's what he unified them with. Yeah. Goodness gracious. That, that, um, that uh, Nightmare Family tattoo of a belt that he united it with. Yeah, you know, so it's like, I. Is this is this long and grueling tournament his way to atone? Goodness gracious! Uh, but I think my official pick will be Zack Saber Junior. Right on. How much time we got? Have we still been recording? Yeah, eight minutes. Hey, hey. easy way. But yeah, I think Zach's going to be my pick for that. Copy uh, that. Glad to see them open the tournament up to the juniors too as well because you get the matchups you don't normally see. Yeah. And we're going to be reminded why when the, you know, heavyweights sort of make uh, quick work of the junior heavyweights. Yeah, for the most part. But, you know, basically almost ending on the same note as our Rumble one. A lot to be interested in the wrestling world, you know. There's a ton to be interested in. Like I said, you know, I'm I obviously have been keeping up, but my interest with stardom is at a peak with Kyrie Sane returning mm-hmm. back. I don't think I've ever officially stated it here on the podcast, but Kyrie Sane is my favorite women's wrestler of all time. Wow. I really enjoy her work, so I'm glad to see her back wrestling. Mm-hmm. Although I will say, you know, she's still up there, but uh, you know, because of not wrestling for the year, you know, EO probably slowly creeped up on her because mm-hmm. EO had that reign with her title and still was wrestling while Sane wasn't able to. Right. But I don't know. I think it was more than likely her gimmick that kind of got me more, you know. The with, pirate thing. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. So I'm glad she's back. There's interest there. As you mentioned, we got Revolution coming up. Our our technical pit stop before WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to make another one. What do you think, Jack? Are you going to watch AEW Revolution? I'm going to wait for the full card to be announced. Fair. Fair. You know, obviously... The See what they pull the out in the tag ranks, the TNT ranks. Yeah, I think it'll be one of those, like, you know, gotta wait for that full card because they got some enticing matches, but, you know... It ain't no full gear all out just yet. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, because I'll still never forget, man. They got me with all out because of the whole CM Punk thing. And then also it was like, they they swerved me because they were like, oh, well, Hangman's not competing. But we got, you know, CM Punk showing up. And I was like, all right, fine. And then they got me with full gear because they were like, hey, you you finally ready to see Hangman's like three year story finally be paid off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yet to be announced, whatever they're going to do with Moxley or Danielson. Oh, yeah, that's going to be real interesting to see and if they actually end up teaming up or not. Mm-hmm. So, 
most interesting time of the year, essentially, when it comes to wrestling. We got a ton to look forward to. Yes, sir. And, you know, hopefully we will be here to cover most of it. Right. You know, hopefully by the next time we're recording, we will see if Cody Rhodes has showed up, if Austin actually shows up or not. Hopefully mm-hmm. not. Come on. You know, um, all the different Hall of Fames. You got Ring of Honors Hall of Fame. WWE Jack, Hall of who's Fame. our first inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame for 2022? The Undertaker. Come on. Did you see that hype package? Yeah. Set to Sad But True by Metallica with the American Badass by Kid Rock in the middle. Yeah, first inductee. What a first inductee. It's obviously, you know, people were like, oh, why is it taking this long if you retired back in 2020? Well, hello, they wanted the fans to be there. Wanted the fans, wanted them Texan fans to be there. Yeah, so we got him going in. Excited to see who else is announced. The Ring of Honor one's looking real good, too. Ring of Honor is is quite the fan service affair, if ever there was one. You got Danielson, Samoa Joe, and Punk. And the Briscoe brothers, yeah, it's Everyone, like it's like they're only gonna do this once, so they're gonna do it right. Yeah, I'm I'm fully expecting uh, Christopher Daniels to be announced soon. Ooh, uh huh. They they gotta work out some deal. If you're gonna throw in uh, Daniels, uh, uh, Danielson, Punk, and Joe, they also gotta get in. Uh, they gotta find a way to negotiate with WWE to let McGinnis show up. Nigel McGinnis, mm. you know, he's part of their sort of group from that time, you know? So it's like, it's going to be interesting to see how many people they put in for that. And Owens and Zane. Yeah. Owens and Zane too. They got to find a way to negotiate some type of deal to let them show up. Mm hmm. You know, cause man, well, Zane was never a part of ring of honor. They'll, they'll, they'll get a, what's his name? El Generico. Mm -hmm. And he's not tied to any company and I'm sure everybody will be just fine. You're right. You're right. And, uh, I think, you know, it's cool to see them honoring them this way. And I think it's also going to show so many people just how many of these companies uh, were truly birthed, or not birthed, but, you know, really benefited from an indie company like Ring of Honor. Absolutely. Because just Good those names alone, Danielson, Punk, and Joe, it's like, wow. Rollins, you know? Oh, yeah. If they get Rollins, they're, they're going to get Rollins in there one way or another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go, yeah, oh, yeah, this thing was like... A monster factory of today's who's who in wrestling. Yeah. So, man, ton of stuff to look forward to in the wrestling world. Jack, Matt Cardona is the NWA World's Champion. I saw that as well. He was flexing all his belts. Gosh, I missed that too. I wish I had seen that match with Trevor Murdoch. But what a time to be a wrestling fan. I wanted to throw that in. I thought there isn't anything else we can possibly say. But there was, Jack. But there was. Oh, man. So much to look forward to, huh, sir? Goodness gracious. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure, sir. Both episodes. As, as always, it's a pleasure to have you here. And as always, you know, well, to close out, I've been your host, Jack Joyma, my fellow guest. It's Mr. Solis. Well, I thank you all for joining us for another episode of Season 2 of the Rule 34 Podcast. Uh, this is episode 50 and 51 of Season 2. So, you know, as I mentioned to Dom after a recording session today, it's going to be interesting to see if we can get more than 75 episodes into this season because that's how many we got into Season 1. Right on. I'm looking forward to it. So, thank you all for joining. As always, if it exists, we have an opinion on it. Thank you, and we'll see you all in the next episode. We finally get to get an outro in. That's two in a day. Woohoo!